y'all. Welcome to my shop. Let me show you this cool tool I made, this beading and parting tool. Let me show you why you might find it as useful as I do, and then I'll show you how to make it for about five bucks. First of all, this beading and parting tool is a, is a parting tool. Uh, I'll show you how you can turn a bead with it, but I want to just give you a size comparison. This is made out of an 8 millimeter uh, by 8 millimeter by 8 by 200 millimeter blank, but uh, a little less than 3 eighths of an inch uh, square and almost 8 inches long. And you can see a compare, uh, comparative size based on this thin parting tool, which is 1 16th of an inch. Uh, this one eighth of an inch parting tool, and then this one. So let's say you needed to make a large tenon. You could easily make that in one pass, just like that. Let me give you some idea of of uh, of how it it can uh, you be used for turning beads. It's, Make just a couple of, mark a couple of bead locations. And we're simply just going to uh, roll a bead with this thing. It acts kind of like a small skew. So for turning beads, it's a little, a little bit like a, a small skew and just a little bit like a uh, spindle gouge. But I think one of the advantages is when you lay this down, to turn this, you don't have to rotate it and lift it up quite as much as you do a larger, a larger skew with a bigger tool. It's a bigger tool. You've got to lift and rotate it just a little bit further. Now currently, I've got this mounted in a 14-inch aluminum handle, which which is all right, but 14 inches is a little bit too long. I think 12 inches is a better size, so I'm going to make a, a wooden handle. I'm not going to go into all the details of the wooden handle. At the end of this video, I'll show you, I'll uh, give you a link to a uh, earlier video I did on, on turning a handle. So the simplicity of making this tool is basically we get the, this blank. Uh, this is a lathe, metal lathe uh, uh, cutting tool, which is readily available in the metal metalworking uh, industry, you can get these things for, uh, uh, you know, generally less than five bucks. I've bought these things off of Amazon for as little as uh, four of them for ten bucks. Generally, you need to buy them in a package of four to get your best price. And I found them off uh, Amazon for less than ten dollars, and I've also found them on eBay. Okay, here's what we need for this project. We need us a tool a uh, tool blank uh, approximately 12 inches long, maybe an inch and a half by an inch and a half uh, square. This piece is cherry. We need the high speed steel tool blank uh, and I'll explain later in the video how we'll source this uh, inexpensively. You'll need some ferrule materials. Uh, the most inexpensive is uh, getting a three quarter inch uh, coupler and then uh, making a mandrel so you can cut it and I'll show you how to do that later. Uh, for my video, uh, I'm actually going to use a little different one. Uh, I'm going to use uh, a bearing, uh, a wore out bearing for my bandsaw, which I've taken apart, and I'm going to use that, that sleeve for mine. Uh, epoxy is nice, but not essential. First thing we're going to do is mark centers. I'm going to use my spring punch, drilling a 3 8 inch starter hole about a half inch deep. So let me do that. Next, we're going to mount this between centers. So we're going to use a 60 degree cone in that hole we just drilled. start sh really shaping the handle I'm going to go ahead and put a tenon on it for the ferrule. Okay I'm not even going to use epoxy I'm just going to pound this on. 
I'm going to use the mallet. I'm going to do this uh, on the floor. I don't want to do this on the lathe. I don't want to scratch it up. And I want this end to be flat. So I'll just put that on the floor and I'll come back after it's pounded on. And there we go. Ideally, you have two ferrules, put another one on and then use it to pound the other one on. But I didn't have another one this size, so I just tapped it around the edge. But that'll work just fine. And I'm going to switch to a... Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to continue. I'm going to use a skew to bring it down here and, uh, and use the spindle roughing gouge to add a little shape to it. and gouge which is the fastest and easiest tool to do this kind of shaping this up with just a bit of I think uh, 180 grit and that'll take care of it. Get that little edge there. And I'm happy with that. So here's what we, how we're going to do the uh, uh, the hole drilling. Instead of uh, putting the 3 8 inch in a Jacobs chuck and putting it in here which takes a lot more room and space, the length of this, we're actually going to put it in the headstock and I'm going to use, I've got a collet chuck system, but I'm going to use this little 3 8 inch collet that fits the 3 8 inch uh, drill bit. This is what I use on my threading system. Uh, so we're just going to pop that in there and, and then of course tighten it up with this drawbar. Now I'm going to use my Nova uh, live system for the initial uh, starting, uh, but it is possible to actually just push it straight on there. But I'm going to err on the side of caution. And you can see this handle will actually fit right into this, this cone on this Nova live system to help keep it centered. Now we're going to turn slow and we're only going to drill about two inches. We're going to drill only at a speed of about 100. And that way, when we remove this and we drive it on, we can drive it on by hand and actually hold on to it without losing control. Now you can see the purpose of that starter hole. So now I can just simply screw this in and drill a straight hole. And I can hold it adequately with, with my left hand. Let me show you. Still got to clear the chips. Almost went too long without doing that. Now, if you got a mini lathe and you don't have room to bring up your tailstock, you can just simply hold on and, and drive it on. So we're going to give that a try. Just want to show you that could be done. So now we got it drilled. And like I say, this, this approach will work with a mini lathe where my other approach may not work unless you have a bed extension. Now let me show you just quickly a, a little bit of handle trivia. If we look at uh, the end of a handle, we're going to see the growth rings going in one direction. Now, and here's the hole we're going to put in it. Now, do you think it makes any difference which direction we orient the tool? Actually, it, it really does. If you think this is a baseball bat, 
then uh, which side would you want to smack the ball with? You're going to want to hit it on this side. And if you look at hammer grips and hoe handles, uh, they're all mounted in a way that uh, the forces will uh, of the grain will, will re resist. So for example, if this is the tool handle, the uh, ideal direction for the tool would be to come up in this direction because the forces of the tool are going to be resisted. But if you look at every tool you probably have in your toolkit, and here's an Asorbia for example, they use the flat side to put their logo because it's easier to put the logo and it looks pretty. And then they'll put the, the tool uh, mounted in that same direction. But you can see this is exactly uh, 90 degrees wrong from the direction it ought to be for, for best strength down, down here in this area if you had a, a really severe force or a severe catch. So I've got my handle uh, turned now. The challenge is we've got a round hole drilled with a 3 8 inch uh, bit and we've got this 8, eight millimeter square uh, blank and it, it won't quite fit in there and I don't want to enlarge the hole too big so I've got to fasten it with epoxy. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, mount it about two inches. We're going to knock off uh, the edges about a thirty seconds of an inch on each each corner, uh, either on a grinder or a belt sander. I'm going to go to the belt sander to to do this. I'm also going to okay. I've knocked the edges off uh, each side. And I simply oriented this thing uh, according to the grain that I could uh, have the flat side uh, in, you know, just line it up in the direction of the grain. And then I marked the four corners. I, th I think you can see those. Yeah, I think you can see those pencil pencil marks where I just marked each corner of that of that steel uh, steel blank. And that's where we're going to come in with basically a, a just a little rat tail a little uh, triangular file and I'm just going to cut some grooves on those corners uh, down here that we can drive that in so when I get that done I'll bring it back and show you. Okay now I've got four uh, witness marks or four little starts with a file I'm going to go to a square file that a uh, little coarser that I think it'll be a little bit easier and basically this is what I'm going to be doing just going to line this up Okay, I've got those those grooves cut in a little bit in it, and I've I've also filed the edge down just a little bit to make it a little easier to drive down. I've got a two inch mark in uh, with a felt tip pen, so I'll know when I've hammered it in deep enough, in case it starts getting getting to be, uh, tough to drive. And then we're just going to simply take our mallet and just drive it in. I'm not going to use any epoxy. I think this will get the job done. Now the only thing's left is for us to uh, us to grind it, and I'll show you how to do that. First, let me show you this awesome handle. I used my Lichtenberg uh, burner. I, as you recall, I did a couple of videos on that a while back, making one. But basically, I took a neon sign transformer and electrocuted this thing with a couple of electrodes and ran electricity through it, and it just did this wonderful, wonderful little detail design on the handle. I think you can see some of that. I just think that makes an awesome looking handle. All right, I'm going to put the uh, the search term up on the screen here so you can see exactly what you need to be looking for. It's a high speed steel HSS square cutting tool bit bar, eight millimeter by eight millimeter by two hundred millimeter. And that search term ought to find it on either Amazon or or uh, eBay. So we're going, to grind, we're going to grind a 45 degree total included angle on this. Anywhere between 40 and 50 degrees is reasonable. Uh, so past experience, I know this setting will, will come pretty close to that. Uh, so I'm going to use my heavy uh, 80, grit, 80 grit CBN wheel. Now, I showed you the little exercise on the grain orientation. So the grain is running this way, and that's the direction I'm going to be sharpening on on each side for maximum strength. 
and we're just going to keep this thing moving. Now I'm going to dip this in a little cooling water. Not, not that it, the steel really is going to be affected by it, but it's getting uncomfortable for my hands is the only reason I want to cool it periodically. Now I'm using a CBN wheel, but you know, if you had aluminum oxide wheels, use your coarse grit wheel and you'll do just fine. Now once you get it down to your, your desired angle, in this case 45 degrees, you might want to consider uh, going to the fine wheel. Uh, just like a skew, you want, you want this to be pretty, pretty sharp. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this project as much, uh, as, as much as I have. Um, if you want to find details on making the handle, go ahead and, and click on the uh, information icon. That will get you to that, uh, that video on the details of the handle, including cut, cutting the copper coupler and two different methods of, of drilling. Safe turning, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe.